Welcome to the Halloween Marathon of 2022. <laughs> Every once in a while, a game comes along that not only starts a successful franchise, but opens the door to many other games in a specific genre. Diablo on the PC was such a game. But I'm not here to talk about Diablo, but rather Diablo 2. This game right here took all the great things from part 1 and magnified them tenfold. It also didn't deviate too much from the original title's eerie and scary ambience. Released at the turn of the century, Diablo 2 was a masterpiece upon release. The story takes place after defeating Diablo. You take the role of a new hero as you travel the lands in an attempt to stop the chaos that Diablo had unleashed upon the world. Whereas the first game offered three classes to choose from, Diablo 2 brought 5 classes and added 2 more classes with the expansion pack titled Lord of Destruction. The game now took place across many different lands and as the player you get to explore many caves and dungeons across different terrains. The dungeons and the overworld are still procedurally generated meaning that every time you start a new game the maps and layouts will always be different adding great replayability to the game. Aside from the extra classes introduced in part 2, you also had a new Hardcore character mode. If you created a character in Hardcore, you only get one life and if your hero died, they were gone. Forever. That's it. You lost it. You lost the character and you lost all the items he or she had acquired up to that point. I think nowadays we call that permadeath, but back then it was something new that the players could tackle for the ultimate challenge. The amount of items that you could collect in this game was also pretty monumental. You had weapons and armor that are categorized into various classes, normal, magical, set, and rare. You could also add gems to weapons and armors to give them unique magical properties. If you have a Horadric Cube, you could mix items and weapons to create more powerful sets of items. One of the other improvements is increasing the amount of players allowed to play at once, increasing from 4 to 8. The soundtrack on this game is everything expected from a game called Diablo. The overworld has a soft yet menacing undertone to it, but once you step into a dungeon or a cave, it's a whole different story. Personally, I have always played as the Amazon because she has access to bows and javelins. The Druid would be my second favorite character. I like his ability to summon elemental forces of the earth in order to fight. His fire magic is totally off the charts. One of my favorites. But I have never beaten the game, believe it or not. The furthest I got was Act 4. I wasn't even aware there were more acts until years later. Most of the time I spent playing this game was on multiplayer and it was usually just the first level or the first act. And I had plenty of fun, so I never bothered to go past that. It was one of those few games that I was hooked to thanks to the multiplayer part of it, so I rarely played the story part of it. I doubt there is anyone that watches this video that has not played this game. So how does this game rate? Graphic wise, I'm going to give it an 8. Graphics, they can get a little uh, bit pixelated, back, sure, but the vast amount of different terrains and dungeons give it a creepy vibe that was set perfectly by the first Diablo. The lighting effects are great as well. This game uses that line of sight view mechanic, which means you can't see around corners and beyond closed doors, lending to that feeling of dread from the uncertainty of what lies beyond your view. Gameplay gets a 10, definitely a 10, solid 10. The ability to select from many different classes, each with specific weapons and armor classes, is a great addition to the game. Some classes have the ability to summon creatures, animals, and magic. This gives the game plenty of replay value as a standalone game. But this game took it further with the ability for multiplayer through Battle.net with 8 player parties. Characters could be saved online for future adventures and you could even share and trade weapons with other party members. The procedurally generated levels also give this game a healthy dose of replayability in the long run. <laughs>
Overall, Diablo 2, it gets a solid 9 on the Halloween meter. It's the kind of game that is made for the Halloween season. The ghoulish backdrop and gameplay makes it an ideal pickup during the Halloween season easily. Actually, it's a great game to pick up any time of the year. With the recent re-release of the game and updated graphics on it, now it's a good time as any to give this old PC classic another try. Now join me tomorrow when I will be covering a game so ghoulish, so dreadful, so cursed that few YouTubers have- Nah, I'm just kidding. It's an Amiga title that is not well known outside its inner circle. But don't miss it! Ha 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 